guys, welcome to another Top Table Wargaming video. This is going to be a tutorial stroke how to type kind of video. Um, not like the usual ones that I've been doing. I'm not going to show you how to build anything. Um, in this video I'm going to show you how I uh, make my own homemade washes. Um, I'll give you a bit of a reason as to why. Um, as some of you may or may not know, I'm building a lot of terrain at the minute and painting it up for a Hobbit SBG tournament that I'm running in July um, and I'm going through tons and tons of the stuff um, trying to get all this stuff frantically painted up and ready for July um, so I was using uh, your standard stuff, your Null Noils, Agrax Earth Shades and other uh, manufacturers different equivalents to those and it's just not worked out cost effective I'm buying tons and tons of the stuff uh, on a weekly basis and it doesn't last very long so I needed a cheaper alternative. Um, I had a lot of trial and error, I, I began by mixing black paint with a lot of water uh, which if I'm totally honest didn't work too badly but as soon as you start trying to go into the browns etc and different shades it doesn't work. Watering down dark brown paint uh, just leaves you with a cloudy watery mess basically. So I trialled the internet looked at different methods and uh, sort of got what I thought works the best and it's, that's what I'm going to show you today. So first thing that you need is some matte medium. I use the brand Liquitex, it doesn't have to be that. Um, I just find that this works well with um, the way that I do things. So yeah, uh, Liquitex matte medium. You'll need some Flow Aid. Again, Liquitex, you don't need to use that brand. Um, any Flow Aid will do water. Um, I tend to use, for no other reason uh, that I think I've seen it on a YouTube video, I use distilled water um, which you can buy, um, but tap water. I've, I've done it with tap water and it's, it, there doesn't seem to be any difference. So you just need uh, some water and uh, some of these plastic bottles which you can get on eBay. Um, these are the large ones, I think they, these are 500 mils. Um, very cheap on eBay, you're talking 99p or something like that, or you can buy them in bulk and get them even cheaper. I, I got a lot of them because you know, I want to make a lot of my own washes, etc. And it helps when uh, I'm actually painting um, to have them in a, in a uh, my flow aid in a bottle that I can just drop, use as a dropper bottle onto the palette, etc. And you will also need good quality artist inks, acrylic inks. Um, I use the Dalla and Rowney inks. Um, there is other manufacturers again out there but these work very very well uh, I have just here just to show you a black and burnt umber we're going to be doing a dark brown wash today so we'll be using the burnt umber um, the only thing that I'll say with these is make sure you shake them because when you order them or you buy them off the shelf they've been sat there for a long time um, just give them a really 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 good shake uh, make sure that there's nothing on the bottom otherwise you won't get the uh, effect that you want so First things first, um, oh sorry, you will also need your smaller dropper bottles for your washes. Don't worry about the markings that I've put on the bottles just yet, I'll explain them and why I've done it uh, as I go. Uh, the markings are just for this video, um, you don't need to mark them on, it's just to, so that you can visually see what it is that I'm doing. So the first thing we'll do, we'll take our water um, and our flow aid. Now if you mix your flow aid um, I normally do uh, roughly 10 to 1 uh, in the with water, so the equivalent of you want 10 times the amount of water to your flow aid. I've marked off this bottle. Um, when I marked it up, I've actually marked it up wrong, so it looks like I'm doing 9 to 1, but it isn't. It's 10 to 1. Uh, so just ignore that. So measure it out however you need to, um, and get your flow aid in there. Like so, I've done many of these so I know when I get to that neck of the bottle um, and where I need to be. We put the cap back on and we give that a good shake, get that mixed up. We want the flow aid to mix well with the water. Uh, one thing I will say, whenever whenever you're doing these homemade mixes, I mean you do it with the with the GW stuff and other brand stuff as well, when you're using washes you always give them a shake before you go because things settle different components within the liquid um, they have different weights and they end up separating 
Um, so yeah, they settle. So let's get straight onto this. Um, you take your small bottle, you take your matte medium, and what we're going to do, you want a 50-50 mix of the matte medium and the flow aid mix in this bottle. Um, now you can measure that out, or an easier way to do it is just to measure, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's like a line just where my thumbnail is there. Yeah, that's what I go for. So I measured from that line to the bottom of the bottle and marked it halfway. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up to the halfway mark with matte medium and then I'm going to top right up to that line with the flow aid mix and I know that that's uh, bang on 50-50. So that's what we're going to do. So I've got 50% matte medium in this bottle. I'm now going to top this up with the uh, water and flow aid mix. Won't believe how difficult it is to try and fill a bottle with a camera right in front of you. It is. So there we go. So that's that. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to pop the lid on. I'm going to give that a shake. Get that nice mixed up. Okay. And then we're going to take our ink again. Make sure it's shake shaken up uh, nice and well. Now these, I'm not sure what other manufacturers like, but these come in dropper bottles, which is really handy because what you can do, because you're always, whenever you, no matter how many of these you mix, if you stick to your same formula, you're always gonna, the, the mix is always gonna be exactly the same. So you can basically measure out how many drops you drop into that bottle and then check the wash. If it's too light for you, you add a few more drops. You know, if it's, if it's too dark on the next bottle, you add a few less. And you can keep track of how many drops get that consistency that, that is perfect for you, for you, for the need that, that you know, you, you might really want something to be really dark, you might just want a really light uh, shadow tone. Uh, so it's really handy uh, to get yourself a little pad and just keep note of how many drops of each colour come out with the different uh, depths in shade that you want. On this one, um, I'm going to go with 20 drops. So squeeze it all out first make sure there's nothing in there and squeeze it I, I normally give it a few squeezes just again because it's been sat resting so what we're now going to do a bit fiddly is get the drops in Okay, so once that's on, give it a really good shake, really, really good shake, and you can see the colour there, yeah? Now this is with 20 drops, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go off camera, I'm just go and get my palette, and I'm going to get a model that's undercoated in white, and I'll show you the shade that this is, so we'll come back in a second. Okay guys, so I've just got myself a little um, Lord of the Rings Sam miniature undercoated in white, just to uh, show you exactly how this works. What we're going to do is just get my palette, give it a shake, pop some of the wash out, there we go. And I'm just going to, just to show you how nice and smooth this mix goes on. It does a very good job. This has got like a nice, um, you can get a sepia ink, but I think that the burnt umber ink comes out as a nice like sepia colour. It's a nice sort of a golden shade, if you like. Um, again, you can play about with these. Um, you, you can mix your inks, so you, you, you could have a bit of the um, brown ink mix with a bit of the black ink, which I think will give you more of the Agrax earth shade tone. And literally when you when you mix them with, with the black ink, very, very minor amount you need to pop in. Just a couple of drops, otherwise you just end up with a black wash because um, it overpowers. Um, so I'll just get the last bit of wash in there to pick out these details. And I'm hoping that that is coming across on camera. Now this has been a lifesaver for me. This 
almost exact colour is what I've been using for my uh, the the wash on my Minas Tirith walls on a white background, and then obviously going back over with the white, lots of dry brushes and highlights, etc. Um, but it's working very very well. And that is pretty much that. You can mix yourself as many washes, as many different shades as you'd like, um, and take it from there. Keep them in stock. Could save you a few pounds in the future. You know, if you do, if if, if you're unsure and you're doing yourself, um, you know, a, a hero miniature, then by all means use use the shades that you're used to. But if it's for your bog standard, um, you're doing like a horde army or something, or you are doing scenery like myself, then this is perfect for you. So let me know what you think of the video. Uh, comment in the uh, box below like the video share the video it'll help me a lot if you could do that would be fantastic I've got a few more videos like this little uh, tips and tricks uh, to come in the next couple of weeks um, so yeah so I'll see you in the next video guys keep on gaming see you soon